Hello there, everybody, and welcome to episode 17 of my team career mode. Singapore is up next. Uh, apologies if my voice sounds a little bit uh, shot. Um, I don't know, I've got a bit of a sore throat at the moment, but hopefully it isn't uh, all that bad. Anyway, vehicle development. We are just behind Alpha Tari, which is super exciting. Unfortunately, last round in Monza, that happened. Uh, we didn't really recover, and um, we didn't score any points. Um, unfortunate there for Sonoda. But anyway, we move forward, and now we have, I believe it's, what, five races now to claim about 25 points to catch Alpha Tari. So it's really starting to get quite intense here, and our opportunities for finding that gap back continue to diminish. But uh, we go on to the Pirelli Autocross Challenge now in the Aston Martin. Um, through the second and third sector here of the Singapore street circuit, looking to get through these gates as cleanly as possible. And overall, this car actually not uh, not too bad to drive around this track. Of course, the first sector quite tight and twisty and a little bit tricky to navigate, even in a Formula One car. As we go underneath the grandstand there, which is uh, turn 18, of course. Super exciting part of the track really tight there through turns 20 and 21 leading on to the final kink looking to get as close to these bollards as possible just narrowly avoiding them through the last corner now as we cross the line it'll be about a 102.7 i believe and that is good enough for gold so we've got maximum acclaim and maximum cash which is always nice. Um, now in terms of the race, as you can see, conditions looking a little bit damp, especially during the race. A wet start basically all but confirmed, so that's going to make things very interesting. And in terms of developments, we've had a bunch of upgrades finished, but also a couple of failures, so we'll look to tidy that up as well going forward. And on the topic of going forward, straight into qualifying now. For our first and only run of the session as Hamilton's actually binned it there at turn 18. So he's gone wide there into the wall, which isn't all that difficult to do, but that no doubt has now compromised his quali. Anyway, we look to ignore that as the session does continue. No red flags in F122, thankfully for us, as we round the final corner onto the front straight through this beautiful opening section, turns one, two, and three. Love that section, so fun at high speed. And look to continue on now through to turn five, the kink down to fourth gear. Get a good run now down the straight with DRS. Our straight line speed, not amazing. And again, the AI is still very strong in a straight line, so we will lose a bit of speed here, but we'll go deep now into turn seven using all that track, probably extending a little bit too much, but we continue on anyway. The nature of Singapore means that there's a lot of right-hand corners and you need to try and carry that momentum as best as you possibly can. Now on the lead up to turn 10, where the Singapore sling once was, now removed. Flick it to the left and down to third for the right-hander as we prepare to cross the bridge. Got to be careful of that curb on the inside as we lose a little bit of traction and a little bit of time down into second for the turn 13 hairpin onto the second. DRS straight, well, I guess technically the third if you want to include the start finish line. No time to be distracted though as we fire it into turn 14 and get ready for the twisty third sector as we enter third gear. As we slam it now into third. Thankfully, Hamilton not leaving any debris there on the racing line. And it's been a pretty tidy lap so far. Don't quite know where it's going to position us. We will have to wait and see as we round the final corner, activate DRS, and it is a 138.6. Good enough for P13. And we're actually going to continue on here. We have nothing really to lose. We're going to try to go for a second lap, but of course our tires will probably not be in the best of shape. Again though, nothing to lose, so we may as well try. We've actually been knocked down to P15, so right in that danger zone, P16. So we will need to try and improve here as we've been knocked down, confirmed 17. So we're in the elimination zone, but we're actually keeping it pretty tidy here to our previous Delta. But we, oh, we hit the wall on the outside on the entry to that right-hander. 
and unfortunately spits us out. So that will be our only clean lap of the session, the one prior. P20 for us, but Jack Aitken, our teammate, into P15. So it should be a big race. Here we go then, it's Formula One in Marina Bay once again. And welcome to you all at home who join us today for this fascinating race around the baking hot but beautiful streets of Singapore. We have a high risk of a safety car here today, I think, as the abundance of tight corners mixed with these wet conditions could put a few cars off and into the barriers. 23 turns then, 13 to the left and 10 to the right, make up the 3.1 mile lap of Marina Bay. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position and starting next to them is George Russell. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Sainz, Lando Norris and Fernando Alonso, Ricardo, Ocon, Albon and Kevin Magnussen. Hamilton, they've taken a grid penalty, Aitken, Lance Stroll and Sonoda, Mick Schumacher, Perez, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Pierre Gasly and Guan Yu Zhou. Bottas, they've taken a grid penalty. Mia, Latifi and Sebastian Vettel starts from the back of the grid. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. It's not going to be plain sailing for our drivers today. Although with the sky falling as it is, perhaps sailing isn't too far from the truth. Natalie Pinkham, good to have you with us here today. Your thoughts? It is a touch damp, isn't it? As a driver, there are three big things to worry about when racing in these conditions. Standing water, tire temperature, and visibility. Judging distance to the cars around you is really tricky when you're driving through the vast amounts of spray that these wet weather Pirelli tires kick up. Here we are then on the rain-soaked grid of the Singapore street circuit. Um, looks like Jack Aiken's starting in P12, so that's super exciting, and he might be able to snag some points, which would be uh, great for the team as we look to try and get these inters up to temperature. Quite tricky in these damp conditions, and overall the temperature, even for Singapore, pretty mild. Anyway, though, we burn out. We look to enter the grid. Position 20, park it perfectly, aimed for the inside. Five red lights, and we're off. Pretty good initial launch, and we'll look to just carry this momentum forward. In fact, it's been an excellent launch, finding so many positions down the inside, and we're already tucking behind our teammate now. We're in P14, we cop a whack, though, from, I believe, the Alpha Tower of Sonoda. Clearly not happy with what happened at Monza and seeking a little bit of revenge, but we get away unscathed. And we are confirmed P14 behind our teammate in Jack Aitken. And we'll be looking to find as much ground as we possibly can in the opening phase of this race. We know that our pace does tend to drop off after about the second or third lap. So we need to find this track position as early as we possibly can. Oh, that's a bunch of the front wing flying off there from Aitken, I believe, as we cop another whack from behind. So debris flying everywhere across this track, which may lead to a safety car. Hamilton and Stroll battling up ahead. Hamilton taking a penalty heading into this race and sideways through turn nine. He does survive though in these treacherous conditions. Visibility is surprisingly better than I would have anticipated, but grip levels obviously far from ideal, especially through this bridge section. Trying to carry across that momentum is tricky. Also getting a warning that our ICE is getting worn, so power will be down. But I decided that in these damp conditions, it wasn't really worth changing to a fresher power unit component. Just would not have been worth uh, the benefit. We want to try and save those power unit components for other opportunities later in the season where we can have a really fresh engine to really attack and try and find the points required to finish eighth in the Constructors' Championship. Is our position now... Seems to have stabilized a little bit. Aitken is a little bit slow through the corners, but I'm assuming that's due to his damage, and I anticipate that he will pull off into the pits at the end of the first lap. So I'm not going to go for any moves and cost us both time, as he does, in fact, peel off, opening us up to an assault 
onto Stroll, 1.8 seconds up the road as we enter the second lap. And it's all about trying to find that margin back over the course of the next few laps. And as you can see, that gap continues to dwindle away. He extends the lead a little bit at some points, but it seems to have now stabilized 0.6 seconds. The gap behind, though, to Sonoda has opened right up to over three seconds now. So we're in a really decent position in this Grand Prix, and we're on the edge of points, so we're going to try and stick with it and continue to push forward. A yellow flag, though, has been waved in this micro sector, and it looks like it's the Alpha Tauri going really slow, so I'm assuming that's Sonoda who will be retiring from this race, and that's one less Alpha Tauri contending for points, and that's a double DNF in a row for Sonoda. That means that it's only Gasly now left standing, who I believe is behind us as well. So we really do want to try and capitalize and find points. It's such a shame that Aitken got damage on that first lap because I thought that he'd be a really good chance to maybe sneak a point or two. And there is confirmation, in fact, that Yuki Tsunoda is out of the session. We move on now to lap number seven, and we are continuing to hunt down Stroll. That gap just continuing to close up and close up. Still at around... 0.7 of a second on lap 9 and the weather perhaps starting to dry up a little bit and in fact the FIA think it's dry enough for DRS to be enabled even though the entire field is still in intermediate tyres and the track visibly wet. So quite an intriguing call there from race control but nonetheless it's outside of our control and it does open up the opportunity now to try and attack Stroll more aggressively because without DRS finding that ground we did it through the corners and the slow speed sections, but on the straights, that's where he gapped us. So now with DRS, we should be able to find that difference. And we want to attack here. We want to try and get this track position. We have a little bit of overtake available as well to try and mount something. But we also don't want to over-aggress and bin it in the wall as the conditions are still very greasy. I I'm shocked, really, that DRS was enabled. The track is still very, very damp, but perhaps it's going to dry up quickly and we might be on the uh, the dry compounds quite soon here. Stroll seemingly struggling a little bit there through the bridge section and we might be able to line him up on the exit of the hairpin at turn 13. Another DRS zone to so an opportunity to attack and we're up into overtake but unfortunately the straight just too short and we can't find that gap there into turn 14. We extend it out wide still having to be very careful on the throttle and ensuring that we do not spin around and cost any opportunity for points in this race through the third sector, the gap still sitting at around 0.7 of a second. So not ideal as the field continues on and does not pit onto the dry compound. The DOS again is still enabled, but the track a little bit damp. However, it is drying rapidly. So we are going to dive into the pits at the end of the lap. Unfortunately, my pit stop changed to immersive for some reason, and I can't work out how to bind the button, so it is going to be a slow stop, plus there was an error on the front left, so overall, far from ideal, a 5.9 second pit stop, which is going to probably put us out of sync of Stroll, who continued on and did not pit. We're onto the mediums, the rest of the field seemingly onto the softs, so we'll see whether or not this alternate strategy does work. It means we will be under threat throughout this stint from the soft tire runners behind such as Schumacher and Perez who are both going to be within DRS range quite quickly here. Track's still a little bit damp. You can see the water on the T-cam. So grip levels are not optimal at the moment but it is drying quite quickly so we should be able to improve our lap times and try to retain this track position for as long as possible and hopefully later on in the race when we jump onto the softs we can find any positions back that we may lose during this phase of the race. But Schumacher behind is looking pretty pacey. So we'll need to ensure that through these slow speed corners onto particularly the longer straights that we get really clean exits and we don't allow him to be within uh, overtaking range. And if he is, we may just have to concede and hope that later on we can find that gap back as he fires it down the inside into the hairpin. We left the door open a little bit but he doesn't quite find enough drive out of the corner. We hold on to that position at least for now, having to be a little bit defensive into turn 14, but able to hold our ground. Schumacher, though, is looking really, really pacey, and we don't want to be going side by side 
through any of the lap. It's just a sure way to lose a second or two and put us out of sync even further after that bad pit stop. So we'll have to wait and see whether or not Schumacher can, can get the move done clearly. Cleanly, rather, as the track now quite dry. Everyone's setting fastest laps of the session. Hamilton with a 145.7. We'll have to wait and see what our time is. I'm assuming it'll probably be a few seconds off that across the line of 148. And my prediction, in fact, is correct. Now, Schumacher has fallen off a little bit. Not sure what happened to him, but it opens the door for Perez to get aggressive once more. We bang tires into the hairpin. Aggressive from both of us, it must be said. And now running on to the DRS straight. We are under threat, but much like Schumacher, able to cover. More fastest laps being set, so the track really drying up at this point. 143, now the session benchmarks. We're five seconds off that. We'll have to see whether or not, even whilst battling, if we can improve that time and get a little bit closer to what the fastest cars are doing. But you would expect Perez behind to be a lot pacier. As you can see, we are struggling for grip a little bit. But at this point, the softs surely are starting to drop off a little bit. And the mediums, in fact, should come alive. As we round the final corner, we'll see what time we post. 147.6. So, honestly, not amazing. We are finding it quite tricky. We're close now with a 142. So, now we're five seconds off the pace. And that the AI around this track, really quick. Of course, the Singapore Street Circuit is a long lap, so it doesn't take much for us to lose a lot of that time. And you can see we are still contending for grip here. The track's still slightly damp. We leave the door open for Guan Yu Zhou through turn 18 into 19, though. We do stay ahead and into 20. We have the inside the line for us to mount the curb a little bit, and we show respect to Guan Yu Zhou. We give him the room around the outside, and he makes full use of that into 22. Able to take the inside line. Vettel shows the nose, but we cut him off. And that does mean we are back down into position 14. But we've been able to maintain decent pace here to Joe. And the big reason for that is that the softs at this point are starting to drop off a bit of a cliff. Meaning that at this point in time, the mediums, in fact, should be slightly faster. As we enter the first corner, a bit of traffic exiting the pit lane. And Ricardo will now be side by side with the Alfa Romeo. And with these two battling, does it give us a chance to enter into the point? Side by side, okay, through Jack's turn five, they compromise their run all the way up this straight. Almost three wide, but we do back out. That was very dangerous and very, very fast into the left-hander of seven. Still side by side, and we're trying to find an opportunity for a switch back. It doesn't present itself. Perhaps through nine, though, we can get a good run into the old Singapore's sling of turn 10. It looks like it's a good enough run to get the inside there onto Guan Yu Zhou as we dive it down the inside. Very aggressive. But he shows us the respect and gives us the room. Now Ricardo set on our sights, but he's on the fresh medium compound, so I doubt we'll be able to contend with him for long. He should be able to just drive off there with that single point in hand and that's exactly what will happen Stroll and Albon in the pits as Ocon gets us down the inside and I think Stroll is exiting the pits right about now and that means that he's far ahead of us in terms of when we eventually are going to pit here Albon as well with superior pace getting us in the same spot that Ocon did and unfortunately this race just slipping out of our grip a little bit. I think at this point, the only thing that can probably salvage it for us is a safety car so we can get a free pit stop onto the softs. Outside of that, though, we are going to just lose too much pace. And yeah, it is Stroll right behind us. He's already pit, so he's been able to find that sort of 20 or 30 second gap, however long it takes to traverse the pit lane. And uh, yeah, we just weren't really up to scratch in this race, which is a little bit unfortunate. Also add on to that, the fact that Aiken crashed on the first lap and who knows what could have happened. Um, the, the, the saving grace is the fact that AlphaTauri also seemed to be quite slow. So I don't think they're going to get any points in this race either. And it is really going to come down to the wire, that fight for the eighth position. I think the sponsor bonus at the moment sits close to about $8 million and we can do a lot with that money if we're able to achieve the objective. We move on now to lap 26 where we have 
fitted the soft tire compound. Perez again finds himself stuck behind us. I'm not quite sure what's going on with the Red Bull strategists this year, but it seems like they have made some pretty interesting decisions. And unfortunately for Perez, he's a long way out of the points. With only five laps remaining, he is not going to get inside the top 10. A couple of those uh, big names not making it into the top 10. Hamilton, another of them. As we run side by side now with Perez, we don't want to forfeit this position too easily. And with the softs, we should be faster, honestly. we just got to get them up to temperature quickly here and keep him behind. And then I think we'll be able to run away from Perez a little bit. Because those hards really aren't going to be the tie to be on, I don't think. And you can see we are now beginning to gap him, especially through some of these slow speed sections where you really do need that bite with the tyre. And the hards just aren't really going to offer that. We got up to about 0.8 of a second, and even with DRS, Perez unable to close it. And in fact, might be under threat from Aiken in the latter stages of this race. We'll have to wait and see, but it looks like he has kept that position. And we are now chasing Vettel up ahead on the final lap of the Grand Prix, looking to see if we can battle for position 16. Perez is four and a half behind on the hard, so we don't have to worry about him. Managed to grow that gap. And they have about 10% of our battery remaining though here onto Vettel. So it'll be tricky to make an overtake stick as Charles Leclerc will cross the line in first position. And I believe that will lock him in as the driver's champion for season one. But we'll get confirmation on that in a little bit. All focused now on Vettel to see if we can find this round. I see comfort though in Gasly being positioned 15. It means that Alpha Tara will not get any points in this race. So if we don't, and it's looking likely that we won't, obviously. And it's uh, basically a neutral race. We continue to fight, though. A wide entry into the hairpin to see if we can get a good run onto this straight. Probably our final realistic opportunity to get an overtake here onto Vettel. But as you can see, his straight line speed is much better than us. Maybe through the slow sections of Sector 3, we might be able to find a sneaky move. But we'll have to be very, very careful as contact is quite easy to make as the fireworks exploded to our right singapore is such an awesome street circuit under lights we're so close to vettel now we scrape his gearbox again we try to get some momentum heading through the final two corners but unfortunately our run is not quite good enough i don't think around the final corner drs isn't enough as we cross the line and it will be position 17. as i said though a neutral race and this season is going to come right down to the wire certainly been an incredible year for Formula One, and our drivers have all pushed themselves this season, making it all the most important years of racing in history. There can only be one champion, however, and here they are now, our new Formula One World Drivers' Champion. That's a spectacular victory, and with it, the championship is secure. It's been a magnificent season, and they thoroughly deserve the cheers of the crowd here today. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. Here come our winners now, a thrilling race and a tremendous effort by Ferrari. Their history is well known, so it's no surprise to fans the world over to see them come out on top once again.